measure, 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 even with accessories. So um, I'm sure people think I'm a crazy person when I go to these accessory places with my little tape measure, and I go do this and do that. <laughs> because you have to know, and you have to know how much space you have. Who um, measures their bookshelves or their, um, their tables before they go out and buy something? Nobody. Okay, good. good. <laughs> Okay, so there's a couple of us that do that. Also, um, measure your dining table before you buy a centerpiece. Y'all do that. Y'all need to do that. Measure everything. Um, you know, yes. what about lamps? Yes. We, you know, like near a sofa, we, we, um, how high? Well, a standard table lamp um, measures about 33, 30 to 36 inches high. Um, if it gets a little bit taller, then it could be considered a buffet lamp. Um, but really, um, you know, most, most so far, yeah, so about 36 inches. Yeah, I, I would go, that would be the highest that I would go. And, yeah, yeah, and most table lamps are that standard height. So really, that's not even anything you need to worry about if you know that you're buying a table lamp. If you're not quite sure what it is, then you do need to measure. Um, and what about the shape? Is that well, it can't be bigger than your table. So it has to be, you have to measure, again, measure the size of your table, and then, um, and then see if it'll, because some tables are small, I mean, you've seen some accent tables that are now only 12 feet in diameter, yeah. then you put a lamp on it, and then, I mean 12 inches, I'm sorry, <laughs> and then the lamp, the shade, is like 18 inches, yeah. So you know, I always talk about a regular sofa. You know, I didn't know if it had to hit a certain place, but I guess that's what you know. Yeah, Again, with scale, as far as accessories, less is more, and I'm sure Ellen would agree with yeah. <laughs> Less is more. No clutter. Um, in this picture, for example, you have just the one painting on that wall, and then you're done, right? I mean, you could do a grouping, um, but wouldn't that look more cluttered than just the one big piece? And that would take a whole lot more work than just the one piece. So that's, you know. Um, that's just something that, that you need to think about. And again, like with the centerpiece, you know, it's just the one centerpiece. It's the right size to fill up the height and the width of the table. You don't have like three candlesticks on there, a bowl, and all this kind of stuff. It's just the one thing. Okay. Now this, um, I want to draw your attention to the scale of the window treatments. Um, because if you have huge, humongous windows like this, you can't put you know, a skimpy little one panel window treatment or just like a little short little balance at the top, it's not going to work. It's not going to look right. So you have to consider, um, you know, adding the length and the width and the weight of the fabric that your window needs. Okay, so again, just an example of balance. Scale. Okay, and I just wanted to briefly touch on collections because we all have, we love to collect stuff, right? And, um, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, I heard from my realtor <laughs> that I'm not supposed to put out these, you know, these collections that I have of teapots or roosters or whatever it is um, that, you know, they look like clutter and all that good stuff. And the truth is, you know, you collect something because you love it, right? And that's why you take the time and the money to to buy these things, and they mean something to you. So if you if if you have that much emotional investment in it, then you should leave them out, or not leave all of them out, but maybe pick out the several favorite pieces. And the way to do it is not to just kind of incidentally, you know, throw them around the room. You need to group them together to to make a statement. And that way, it's one big statement instead of just like a haphazardly, you know, scattered arrangement. So, for example, this grouping right here, um, they have this collection of, of prints, and so um, they filled up the and they they designated a space for it. Do you see how they yeah. painted a, a square on the wall just for that? Mm -hmm. So it makes it stand out, makes it seem like it's honored. Ellen talked about that, honoring a sentimental piece. Um, so that's what you need to do. Another example, 
putting a frame or molding around the wall. And they put um, sheet music on the back of it, just to make it, you know, it makes it much more important that way. Um, here's another way. And then just because you have a shelf doesn't mean you can clutter it up with all your stuff. Like, you know, even if you say, oh, I'm grouping all my collections in the one shelf, you still have to make it look um, like it's a deliberate arrangement. You can't just kind of put them all in there and say, oh, that's, I'm done. Um, and the way to do that, again, is to honor your pieces. Um, stands are really good for that kind of stuff, and we can get those anywhere. Stands are all, Hobby Lobby has all kinds of stands, right? Risers things like that, so you can play with different heights. Um, make sure, again, if you have delineated spaces like that on your shelving, that you fill up the whole space, and don't put like something uh, you know, very, very small on a big area. Curio cabinets, love the curio cabinets, because they keep us from dusting, right? <laughs> the collection, but again, Make sure that everything is to scale um, and, and that everything is um, properly placed in there and not just kind of, you know, scrunched on the shelf. This is custom built. So if you can do this, this would be fabulous. If you have a collection that you want to display and, and you can do um, a custom built display area, then knock yourself out. That's the best way. Containers are great. So here she has a little shell collection um, that she just put in a basket and it looks great like that. And then, you know, they don't all have to be, but again, I mentioned the roosters because some people, you know, they love all the roosters. And so if you have, for example, um, two different pieces or two different kinds of accessories, but they're, you know, with the same kind of theme, you can group them together. Again, that's just the two pieces. You don't have you know, five, yeah, a whole, a whole family of chickens. <laughs> and then let's talk about pictures, family photos, because, um, you know, these are the people that live in your home, that, that you love, that mean something to you, and of course you should have your family photos out in your public spaces, because you hear that all the time, especially on HGTV, they say you should always put away your family photos. Um, and I would say, if you're staging your home and you're, you know, it's on the market and people are coming in there to look at it, then sure. But if you're living in it and, and you know, you want to see your loved ones and, and photos of them, um, you can do it in a way, if you just get the coordinated frames, that's the easiest way to do it, you know. Don't get, and this is the trick, because people... We get frames as gifts all the time, right? And you know, you get this funky pink frame with a daisy on it, and then somebody else gives you another one, you know, that's got like glitter and you know, old world scroll work, and then and then you want to just use it all because they mean something to you. But really, you shouldn't do that. You should <laughs> you should make sure that all your frames are coordinated. They don't have to be exactly the same. Like in this picture, they're not exactly the same, but they're kind of the same finishes. Um, of course you can do, you know, if you want your whole wall like to have a gallery look, if you want to do that with exactly the same frames, that's a good look too. But um, you can also do it this way. So that's just my quick note on uh, family photos and collections. And I think that's it. That's the end of my little spiel. I hope we didn't go over time. And <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that.